Quad 6.6. Six. Um, continuing with these videos on looking at black box review and tuning and troubleshooting of tunes. Um, and in this video what we're looking at is um, set point tracking. So in green here we've got our set point and then in purple we've got our gyro. So this is the data recorded on the black box um, and it's tracking what our quad, um, the command that we gave our quad and what the quad did. And then the two parameters I want to talk about in terms of adjusting in this video is the P term and the feed forward term. Here the P is in red and the feed forward is in orange. And I'm going to not talk about um, the D term in this video because that just does a little bit uh, over complicates things. So in these videos too, I'm not trying to be start to finish or comprehensive. I think um, UAV Tech has already done a great job. So if you need to kind of learn the basics, go see that first. And then when you want to talk about like the details and nuance for targeting to micros and filling in those gaps of like what's good or what can you expect from a micro, these are the videos to look at. Um, all these videos I'm collecting on my digital shop on the coffee, so if you're looking for the other stuff, other parts of these videos, then um, go check that out. The link is down below. Okay, so this is actually the tune that I ended up with, and on this tune, I've got a derivative of 50, which we're not going to talk about too much here, but I ended up with a P of 57 and a feed forward of 225. I particularly want to point out the feed forward of 225 because um, a lot of times I see some of these tunes that are coming from uh, manufacturers or people and there will be like a feed forward of 10 or 20 or 30 or something like that and you're like, that just doesn't do anything. Um, to get feed forward to do something, you're going to be up here in 150, 200, maybe even you know potentially 300 if you have a clean enough RC uh, signal. Um, and then this is a 2S, so this, you know, these P isn't as high as... Um, as it would be on my 1S, but anyways, that kind of gives you a feel for where we ended up. And why did I end up here? Well, the reason I ended up here is because if we look what our set point does, is as I give the, the quad the command with the stick, the set the gyro actually follows it pretty close. There's a little bit of lag, but it's not terrible. And then once I get to my full roll, it comes up here, catches the, you know, the set point on where I'm telling it to be, stays pretty flat, and then when I finish the roll, when I stop, the gyro slow, you know, the, the quad slows down, and there's nothing going on crazy down here at the end. There's maybe a tiny little bobble, but that's not a bobble I'm going to see at all through the camera, and we're not recording HD. I think even in HD, you're probably not going to see that. But this, to me, is a pretty good tune. And the reason I know that is not because I know it is, you know, in, in terms of, like, comparing to other quads. I know it is because I go through and systematically take these terms too high and too low, to see what problems they're going to induce and make sure that I'm somewhere here in a happy medium and knowing that I can't really get this much better because if I go a little higher I'm going to induce other problems. So in terms of what these um, terms are doing, you can see that the feed forward, the feed forward is the one that initiates the motion of the quad and then the P comes in afterwards and the P kind of finishes up uh, the motion of the quad. And the, the feed forward is kind of interesting, we'll talk about um, Let's just get to the examples, guys. So what happens if we don't use enough P? So I've got the same feed forward here, and you can see when we initiate the move with our set point, so over here, the, the gyro initially, it pops up pretty well, but then the P just isn't there to finish the job, and so now our gyro comes in late, and then it oscillates because it's it's over damped so it can't quite get there so it, then it overcompensates and then you get this slow oscillation so this is a nice clue that if your P is showing it, if your P is too low if it's over damped your, your gyro is going to show up late and then overshoot the set point and kind of do a slow oscillation and we're also going to see it here at the end of the move after our set point comes back to zero and our quad should be still we do that same thing, we overshoot it, and then we get this slow oscillation. So when we talk about oscillations, a lot of people say, okay, if you have um, too much P, you're going to get oscillations. Well, it's true also if you go too low. If you're too high or too low on the P, you're going to end up with the oscillations. And so to show you what, now, so, so too low of a P is going to be slow oscillation. On the other hand, if we go with too high of a P, you're going to get the fast oscillation. So now um, the P here, so that last one, the P was down to 30. This one, the P is up to 70. And so in this case, you can see that our gyro over here in purple, you know, actually tracks really well initially. And then it comes up and overshoots a little bit, but that's not a big deal. But then it kind of sits here and oscillates a little bit. 
Now, if you look in the black box review forums, um, there will be a lot of comments of people just saying, don't worry about this because you're going so fast that you don't have to worry about oscillations. You're not going to see them here anyways. And that may be true, but it bugs me because I can hear it. And also, when I hear it, I know that it's probably going to show up as a problem elsewhere. And we know that this is, and this is a fast oscillation. See how it comes up and crosses the line several times? And when we highlight the P down here, you can see that the P is actually oscillating too. And then sure enough, when we try and stop the move, we get another oscillation at the end. And so this is the one that the people recording HD would drive crazy. But you can also feel this on these little micros, although it might not bug you that much because our cameras are so terrible that we're not going to see this little oscillation at the end. But you can see on the black box that it is there. So I do know that 70 was too high, no 30 was too low. Bounced back and forth around 60, 65, and I couldn't get it any better, so I settled on 57 on that. So that takes care of our, our P term. So then, um, you know, feed forward. Well, what happens if we take, let's see, the feed forward higher? That's no feed forward. Let's actually take the feed forward higher first. So um, feed forward, we can actually crank this up. And so this feed, the last feed forward I had 225. This one I cranked it up to 275. And you're like, hey, wait a minute, this looks great. So we actually get even better set point tracking here because now look at our feed forward coming in. So it's over here in orange. It's coming in, really driving the set point tracking. And then feed forward is nice because you don't have to worry about the oscillations because it's sort of a self-damped term. Feed forward only responds to change in your stick. It doesn't, res like, it doesn't keep trying to work like the P does to correct error. So it essentially it's on and then it's off. Once you're not doing anything with the stick anymore, you don't have to worry about feed forward generating bad oscillations. And so that sounds kind of awesome. Well, the problem with it though is that when you really start pushing the feed forward, um, you're going to run into problems when we do these smaller moves. So that was a full roll. Now we're going to go into the little twitches. So this is like your quick little corrections and you know responding, trying to correct the quad. And then this is the problem with if you just try and go nuts with the feed forward is that you're going to get these little overshoots because the feed forward comes on strong enough to where it kind of like, you know, it's like if you're going over a hump, you catch a little air and it does get it back on, but it can overshoot it. And if you um, I'm not sure if I'm going to get a good example here, but yeah, over here you can see it where it overshoots it and then overshoots it back the other way and the P is struggling to kind of keep it on. So this can be problematic. The other thing that also happens, like I don't have a great RC signal, so I have to use some smoothing, but if you don't want to use a ton of smoothing, then your feed forward might be also prone to biting on, on noise and kind of responding to noise and having problems there. So. The other question is, okay, well, do we need feed forward? Because if it's prone to noise and kind of overshooting these corrections, do we need forward? Can we get away with can can we get away without it? And so, you know, the answer in truth is that sure, you can get away without um, feed forward. Let me find the example here. Sorry, I had it and then I moved it. All right, you can get away without feed forward. So I turned the feed forward off here if you're fine showing up late to the party and then overstaying your welcome. And although that might not bother you a huge amount on kind of like these full moves like this, you can just kind of anticipate it. When we talk about kind of quick response and correction, so let's find our little um, twitch moves at the end. This is what happens if you're trying to fly without feed forward. You end up with this phase delay. And so, although this isn't going to happen from the PID, you're not going to have oscillations from the PID, you're trying to correct, and when you end up with this phase delay, that's really hard to correct, and you can see this um, tracking here, where it's like, here's your set point, and then you're not overshooting it, but you got this delay, and that's going to cause you uh, problems there. So, anyways, um, that was just a quick video on... Uh, P and feed forward and set point tracking and so basically just remember that your feed forward comes on early has the benefit of not causing oscillations but if you get carried away with the feed forward you're gonna bite on noise and you're gonna overreact also with quick you know quick corrections you might overdo it and then the P is there to kind of finish up the move um, the P though if you overcook the P then you end up with fast oscillations just remember too with a too low of a P you can get slow oscillations all right, help, hope this video helps you. Till next time, cheers.